What's up, fellas? We're burning the candle at both ends here today. I've got some e-waste I'm melting. We're gonna be making some anodes to recover precious metal. And boy, is this thing hot. This is about a $40 crucible that I just broke. I got to use it one time. It's a alumina high form crucible. Very expensive. Turned out not to be very good. But anyway, you gotta do what you gotta do to figure out what's best. So. The heat kicking off of that forge is enough to burn your face off, I can tell you that. So, I couldn't even stand it long enough to pick that crucible up. I just had to close it. It's like some kind of radiation beam that'll cook a turkey in 10 minutes. But anyway, this is how I roll. I'm just trying to get her done. We go well into the evening with this day. And uh, I'm sure the neighbors hate me by now from all the noise. Today we're going to be using my 2600 degree waste oil burner. I sell this bad boy on eBay and I'll tell you what guys, today we melted stainless steel. I had a stainless steel plate at the bottom of this uh, foundry for my crucible to sit on and it turned into a puddle of liquid metal. So we officially hit over 2600 degrees. So we do have some footage to corroborate that. It's kind of hard to see it on the camera, but I want you to see this little shiny blob of molten metal. See that right there, just above the lip of the crucible on the floor? It's right at the intake where the burner is. You see that shimmering ball of metal? It's about the size of a quarter. That is a huge blob of liquid stainless steel that has come from the stainless steel plate that I set my crucibles on to help transfer the heat to the bottom of the crucible better because there's kind of like a big insulated barrier there. So we officially hit 2,650 degrees Fahrenheit right there, guys. Incredible. That's 1,455 Celsius. All right, guys, this is the A3 crucible coming out of the pits of hell. And you remember, Basil, me and you were talking about smoke output. As you can see, there is some smoke coming off of this stuff. And that's probably from the flux for the most part, but uh, the volatile oxides maybe. So to answer your question about the smoke, when it's running, I think the smoke is diffused so much with the air that you just can't see it. It's just thinned out too much. So there is some smoke to be had. And I did, uh, just wanted to get you some footage of that. Other than that, uh, looks like I'm having some trouble. This crucible just broke on me and a large piece got lodged underneath it. And I didn't want it to uh, lean in there crooked because it messes with the turbulence inside of the furnace. You want it to be sitting in there just perfect. I don't use a cyclone on this furnace. It's just not really necessary for something this small. One thing I do like about this setup is it's so hot that you don't gotta use a torch to relight it. You just turn on the air and fuel and you're down the road again. So if you're running multiple crucibles at once, this little setup is a breeze, man. I really like it a lot. All right, so I've been going at it for hours. Look at just how bright and hot that thing is when the sun's going down. Incredible. And again, we do see the smoke production that we discussed. So this material does put off some smoke. I would imagine just about anything with flux is going to smoke like that. Um, if any of the commenters know for sure whether or not that is the volatile oxides that we see off-gassing. That stuff will sit there and boil for hours. The pot will. The boiling is actually what mixes everything. So you really want that to boil and you want to cook this stuff for at least 25 minutes. It starts to completely melt at 21 minutes, but uh, you want that boiling action to mix it all up. What's up, fellas? Today we're doing a video about crucibles. It's a very hard thing to determine is what is a good crucible. You got to spend a lot of money to do it. There aren't any good videos online, and because YouTube has disconnected the comment section, you can't leave a comment on a video and get feedback anymore. It's, it's just broken. They've intentionally broke it. These are some of the ingots that I've poured over the last couple of days using uh, these Salamander Super Crucibles. These are very good crucibles compared to other items that I've bought. 
Um, you get like one or two uses out of the other Amazon models. The cheapos that claim to be silicon carbide, they're actually just graphite. And graphite burns in oxygen. So this Salamander Super is a silicon carbide crucible. And you get about 14 runs out of one of them. This is an A4. I'll leave a link in the description for these crucibles. Except for these because this is not an Amazon product. This is, however. These are pretty good crucibles. I don't know that I would want to use this one again because they become so brittle. When they get to this point, it's very dangerous. You could probably get one or two more uses out of that. But uh, it's a high risk. This here is an aluminum crucible. This is a very expensive version. And you can tell just by the shine of it, the density of this stuff. It's a very, sounds like a bell. Very solid aluminum crucibles. This is about $136 worth of crucibles right here. But I wanna show you something. For 24 bucks, and it was a total ripoff. You can see how porous it is and it just doesn't have that compact centered feel that those units do the, the units we just looked at come from a company called add value technology and they've got some high form aluminum crucibles and I, the two items i purchased were 58 dollars and 35 dollars respectfully and you can see here for 35 bucks we got the real deal versus the uh amazon shakedown and you see the porosity of this thing. I got two uses out of this. This is the Salamander Super. Um, this is a very good crucible, especially if you're doing some low temperature work. I would imagine these things last for quite a long time. And you can see I've bought quite a, a few of this. These items here are just junk. They don't hold up. They're not really made for air furnaces, but I have ordered all of these items and uh, for the most part, the only one that's any good is these Salamander Supers. I'm caught in that place where you buy something to use it, but I don't want to use it now because it costs so much money. So in the test, I'm not going to use this big crucible. We may find out that the flux just eats it to death. And I want to be able to melt these ingots down, these uh, e-waste ingots inside of one of these crucibles. I don't want to do that in the graphite crucibles. They're too brittle. Um, when you go to pick it up, it's so heavy, you feel like you have to crush the crucible. It's just dangerous. So we're gonna do some e-waste in this bad boy right here. This is some shaker table material that an attempt to smelt it has taken place with an induction furnace, but it just wouldn't do it. So I've been tasked with melting this stuff using conventional means of gas burners. And we're gonna be using a waste oil diesel mix on this particular run because the diesel runs a little bit hotter than waste oil, but just to kind of make it a little bit cheaper, we are going to uh, mix the fuels. Just wanna get a shot of this in case it changes color on me from being exposed to the air. <laughs> okay, so the copper appears superb. Very clean. We just gotta dial in <clears throat> some of the flow parameters. Uh, one thing that they do to eliminate these nodules in practice is periodically reverse the current and it dissolves them away. This discoloration is some secondary staining from the acid. It didn't look like this when I first pulled it out at all. For anybody who's late to the game, this is the machine that I use to make that copper and digest that e-waste. I've changed it up a bit though. We have now stopped the electro winding cell test and the digester anode test in this phase. 
and we now have an electrolysis cell running in here. I have the anode basket, the cathodes, and there is about 4,000 grams of material in that anode basket digesting away. This solution has cleared up significantly from the carbon filter. I can pretty much see down inside there. I want to show you something else really cool. You can actually see a transition between what has been cleared up and what hasn't been. Look at that. So this carbon filter is doing its job. There is definitely a lot of scale buildup from this heating element. I was right. So this uh, particular heating element is not very good for this, but it's working nonetheless. I am just impressed with how much this solution has cleared up. Wow. That is incredible. It even cleared up inside of here too, strangely enough. So we are getting some good flow. But uh, you can see another one of those transition lines here. So that's very interesting. So we're gonna make note of that, that the uh, carbon filter is definitely not a waste of time. And uh, yeah, that's what, uh, this is an electro winding slash electro refining machine. It can remove metals from pregnant solutions and it can also digest e-waste ingots or even just copper scraps. You could just throw copper filings or anything in there. We're running at 0.8 volts, 13.5 amps, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. I may uh, do some testing at hotter temperatures. I really love how clean that material in there looks right now. It means it's not passivating on me. Boy, I hope you can see that as well as I can. That is just so neat. This solution was completely cloudy. Kind of like the material you see right there and uh, the carbon filter has clarified it. Very happy with that. Earlier there was a little tornado in here on this uh, secondary cyclone, but it's gone, it was really cool. So yeah, well, there you have it. I just realized that I didn't have any clips of this machine in the video, so some of you guys are going to be looking at that copper piece wondering what in the heck is really going on. This thing right here is just a massive um, multi-hydrocyclone array. There are 10 cyclones inside of this. They're a little bit smaller than this one right here. This is a catch tank. It was made to capture anode sludge. But with this particular system here, all of the anode sludge will be captured inside that one micron basket. That is also said to be a good way to keep iron out of the anode because if iron is reduced or oxidized at the anode, uh, it's a circular reaction that robs electricity from the process. All right, fellas, so here's the end result. Based on one of these cracks I seen, this one right here, I've left to believe what we're seeing here was uh, stress corrosion cracking that took place. And maybe it's the flux or something in that mix that caused this uh, crucible to break up this way. This is like 35 bucks down the drain just for you so you know not to do it um the thinner one that i bought off amazon did the same thing i got two runs out of it 
So <laughs> it was thicker though. Um, if anyone knows anything about these particular types of crucibles, I know they're often used in ovens with uh, maybe no flux. I'll have to look into that, but just wanted to give this thing a try and see how it worked out. We got a 14th pour out of this A4 Salamander Super. You got to be careful with these things once the, you go to handle them. They get this angel hair on there that will stab you, and it's like a glass splinter. See if I can find one. Right there. See that little spike? That thing is like a hypodermic needle, guys. Here was some big ones here that were sticking off the side that I broke so I don't shank my heart out. Uh, them were some really nasty ones right there. It's called angel hair. And uh, one of them got me earlier. Gotta be careful. This is the other unit here. This is the A3 Crucible. I think this is also about 35 bucks. These things do pretty good, I guess. Uh, I don't know much of anything that could last forever at 2,600 degrees. So, there you have it. I'm glad I didn't use the big one in the test. And I'm sorry I put this at the end of the video if you came here exclusively looking for crucible footage. That was not strategic. I just suck at telling stories. <laughs>